Hello, good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Tired? Ready to go? Who went to the party last night? Did you party? Yeah, maybe? <laughs> All right, uh, I'm Chris Castle. I'm going to talk about Heroku. Um, anybody recognize this? Raise your hand if you recognize this logo. If you don't recognize it, you're not paying attention to me because I also have it here. Um, this is the, the Heroku logo. Um, raise your hand if you know what Heroku is. One, two, three, four, five, maybe like 10, 12 people. All right, so Heroku is a platform as a service. One more hand raising, and then you can go back to sleep. Just kidding, please don't go back to sleep. What is a platform as a service? Raise your hand if you know what, what platform as a service means. All right, so Heroku is a platform as a service. Um, it's, a, it's a tool for developers to ship websites or web applications um, or applications in general into the cloud. Um, and Heroku takes care of a lot of the, the operations tasks that you would otherwise have to do using other cloud providers. Here's an example uh, depiction of some of those things that you would have to do as uh, um, if you were using another, another cloud provider. You very often have to worry about things like which operating system am I going to put on my server? Um, who's going to manage that operating system? Who's going to patch it when there are security vulnerabilities? Uh, what else is there? Storage. How do we store files? Where do we store files? Security, again. Uh, maybe logging for your application, monitoring, um, orchestration of multiple applications and containers and how they communicate with each other um, and what, what security is like between them. Uh, networking, uh, load balancing, right? You need to be able to scale up and scale down easily, and the network needs to be able to handle that and route traffic appro appropriately. Uh, lots of other stuff here. Um, there's probably a lot more that's, that's not even depicted on here. This is what Heroku tries to do. We try to make it really simple for uh, a developer to deploy an application in any language of their choice, um, and then really easy to manage it and then very easy to scale it when you, know, you get mentioned on Oprah or something like that, and she's your uh, uh, app of the, what is it, book club? Does she have a book club? Like book of the month, app of the month club. Um, so I'm going to jump right into a demo. These are slides, but I'm going to try to do a live demo and hope that the demo gods are with us. Can everybody see this? Make noise if you can't see this, but don't clap. All right, this is what we're going to do. Uh, so we're going to deploy a really, really simple little application to Heroku. Uh, I'm going to do it from scratch. I'm going to create a directory for my code in here. Let's call, it, let's call it something else. Someone yell out a name. What do you want to name our new cool app? What's that? Flying Pigs. OK, we're going to make an app called Flying Pigs, which may or may not include Flying Pigs. All right, so we're going we're gonna to create the simplest app that I think you can create on Heroku is just this like really, really simple PHP app. Uh, I'm not a PHP developer. I do like Node and Ruby and um, Python and some other languages. But we're just going to do a really, really simple PHP app. But all of those other languages you can deploy to Heroku also. So here's what I'm just going to say, look, I've already practiced this. I'm just going to put hello world in just a little index.php file right there. I'm going to make it a Git repository. I'm going to add index.php, and I'm going to, uh-oh, I gave away my, my secrets. Uh, I'm going to give it you know, initial commit or something. Uh, initial pig flying attempt with sput typos. All right, so now we've got a git repo. We've committed just, just this little index.php file that says hello world in it. Now we're going to create a Heroku app. These names have to be globally unique, so I'm going to see if someone else has created a Flying Pigs app on Heroku before. It'll tell me, it'll say, hey, you can create that or can't. Oh, we got Flying Pigs. So that's never, uh, not never been created, but right now it doesn't exist as an app on Heroku. So we've got an app called Flying Pigs. All right, and we're going to say git push Heroku master. So what's happening here? Uh, when we hit said Heroku create, we created an empty container. It also added a uh, a Heroku remote in our Git repository. So we pushed to that. And all that stuff happened really quickly. But um, if you scroll up a little bit, we can see here that, oh, PHP app was detected there. 
Um, Heroku detects the language when you deploy to it um, using a, a number of different heuristics, like uh, composer.json is normally used in um, PHP files or PHP apps that use Composer for dependency management. Um, I think this app was detected as PHP just because I had a PHP extension on the, the index file there. Um, but the same thing happens, or same kind of heuristics happen for Ruby, Java, Python, other languages. Uh, bootstrapping, it installed some platform packages. Looks like it installed 7.3.5 PHP. Um, Apache was installed. Nginx was installed. Um, I don't know why both were installed, but, but maybe we can use one or the other. Uh, that some dependencies were installed there. You know, we got some errors here. It's like, hey, you have no composer.json. Um, uh, you know, that's, it's, it's better to be explicit when you're programming and, and doing these things. So you probably should have a composer.json, but I'm trying to keep this really simple and really fast. Um, it created a, a web process type, um, and then it compressed everything there into a slug. That slug is, is really what's kind of like thrown into the container and then started up, and that's, that's going to be our application. And we got a URL here, so if we actually click this, you can just barely see it, but there's our hello world. Uh, we just deployed a Heroku app that says hello world. Um, it's not very exciting, though, so let's make a change to that. Right? So I could um, just to show, remember this is what index.php looks like. Let's make some quick changes to it. Um, I'm going to use the long ago deprecated marquee tag. And I'm going to give it a background color, uh, chartreuse. I think that's how you spell that. Don't use the marquee tag. It is long ago deprecated, but it's kind of fun for, for stuff like this. All right. So now get status shows us we have a change in index.php. I'm going to add that file and commit it, um, add marquee, kind of like flying pigs. All right, get push Heroku master again. So it's going to go through a similar process, except it's going to cache all the dependencies and things that we had there before. Uh, it's a little bit faster. You probably can't tell here because we don't have a lot of dependencies. Um, and now we're going to open our Heroku app again. Here it is. Uh-oh. Give me some marquee. Did I misspell it? Oh, why didn't you tell me earlier? Oh, M-A-R-Q-U-E-E. -E. There we go. All right. All right, we're going to do it again. Another deploy. All right, so we've just, this is the third deploy to Heroku in however many minutes we've been sitting here. Uh, Heroku truly tries to make it super, super simple for you to get your app from working locally on your computer to, to live, publicly accessible on the internet. And you could apply a custom domain to this, you know, for your, your fancy app. There we go. <laughs> so now we've got some uh, fuchsia scrolling marquee text saying hello world and no pigs because I didn't have time to add those in. Um, but that's it. That's, that's the basics of, of creating and deploying an app to Heroku. Um, the one other thing we can do that's pretty cool is scale. So I, I mentioned that a little bit, um, PS, scale, web. So right now, if I do, uh, let's just do PS, Heroku PS. This will tell us about what we ha what's running for our app right now. We have um, a web dyno. Um, it's, it's the dot one dyno. So there's just one of them, and it's up, and it tells you when it was up. But I could do something like this. I could say PS scale, web equals um, 99, maybe. I don't know if I'll hit an account limit, but let's see what happens. Scaling dynos, uh-oh. Cannot update to more than one free size dyno per process type. All right, I won't be showing scaling. So this is using the free dynos. Good time to mention that Heroku has a free tier for almost everything, so you can try it out, test it out, deploy a little sample app, create a proof of concept, uh, learn a new language or a framework or something like that, um, figure out if it's going to be good for your company or your project, and then start paying for it. Um, so I'm using the free dynos here. Um, let's switch back to our slides, and we'll keep, we'll keep going. I'm happy to. I let debug or talk to you about your Heroku apps if you have any, anything going on there on your own. Um, we're going to start up here. OK. So let's review what just happened there in the deploy process. Uh, developer codes app. I'm serving as developer here. Uh, I wrote some code with your help, uh, Flying Pigs app in index.php. Um, I pushed it to Heroku. Heroku kicked off this build process. And then it created this slug, and then it deployed it into this empty container that it's Heroku's fully managing for you um, in a dyno. So Heroku app runs on Heroku in a dyno. A dyno is Heroku's name for a process running in a container. 
Um, it's not a industry term, it's a kind of a Heroku specific term and um, maybe a little bit confusing. So you, you don't really need to know it other than that, it's just a, a process running a container. You have um, through the command line and through a web-based web interface, app management um, controls, and you have these things called add-ons, which we'll get into later. Um, and then as I showed you, the app was running live on the web. Um, if you want to right now on your phone, you could go to flying-pigs.herokuapp.com and you would see that too, right? I wasn't faking anything here. It wasn't like a, a fake demo. Um, I, I didn't know the app name before this gentleman gave it to me. So you can see that that, that app is live on the web um, running in a free dyno. All right. The, the, the simplicity that, that that kind of conveyed or what I just showed you there might make you think that Heroku's not, not you know, great for big companies. We have all these companies that are using Heroku right now. Um, Heroku is really useful for students. Um, I used it before I worked at Heroku to learn new things, to um, uh, kind of do little startup side projects or proof of concepts, even for my work. Um, but you know, we have like universities, we have nonprofits like Charity Water, um, Harley Davidson. We've got large um, like Fortune 500s like Dell or Eli Lilly um, that are using Heroku uh, because it, it helps their developers just ship faster and, and iterate much more quickly and not have to spend a lot of money on um, operations, DevOps, operations, operations team. Heroku's platform handles over 25 billion requests per day. Uh, we've been doing this for 10 years. We've had a lot of practice um, building and sustaining um, and making sure the, the platform stays up. Um, there have been more than 8 million apps created and we have over 150 add-on services which I'll get into a little bit later again. All right. But let's talk, kind of step back a little bit and talk about uh, Heroku kind of from a, from a higher level perspective. Um, the coding portion is done. If that was, if, you, if I kind of lost you there, or if that was, that was too much, I'm gonna talk about kind of more about like, like why Heroku and what's its benefit to a team and to an organization. Heroku really stitches together three things. Um, apps and add-ons, we talked about apps a little bit. App-focused data services. Um, and team and workflow collaboration. Heroku's goal from the, the very beginning has always been to make the, the, the experience of developers actually using the tool day to day to be um, easy, intuitive, and, and even delightful, uh, rather than like struggling reading through lots of documentation or lots of steps in figuring out like security policies and, and other things you have to configure. Um, Heroku tries to make it really easy for, again, you to get stuff live and, and even a little delightful. So let's talk about apps and add-ons. <coughs> We looked at this earlier. This is just that kind of the top piece here. We, we, we created an app, deployed it, and it was running live on the web. Um, but now you have to operate that app. You have to make sure it stays up. Um, you can write code that has a memory leak or, or you know, uses too much CPU. So we give you a, a dashboard and, and tools to see how much RAM or how much CPU or what the response time is for your application. Scaling, which I talked about earlier, I showed that from the command line. You can also do this from the web-based dashboard. Almost everything on Heroku you can um, view or, or interact with from, from a command line or through a web-based dashboard. So here we're scaling up. We can scale horizontally, adding more instances of our apps, um, or we can scale vertically by adding more RAM or CPU. And then here's add-ons. So coming back to, to add-ons, uh, Heroku has this marketplace called the Elements Marketplace of over 150 add-on services. Um, there's data stores, there's logging providers, there's monitoring providers. This is just a small selection of, of that over 150. Um, I'm not uh, recommending any of these, but these are, these are our most popular ones that, that Heroku users use. Um, a MySQL database, logging. This is like l less code that you have to write as a developer. Really, you just write glue code that you know, integrates the New Relic APM monitoring service with your application. Um, or if you need to send emails, the glue code that uses the SendGrid email service for password email or password reset emails. Um, then there's app-focused data services. These are add-ons also, but Heroku runs a few of these data services. So we've got Heroku Postgres, which is just a Postgres database that's fully managed, easy to use, SQL database. Um, this is the da what the dashboard looks like. You can in interact with it through the CLI. There's Heroku Redis, same thing. Dashboard, CLI, very easy to use, great for caching and managing job queues. Um, Apache Kafka on Heroku. Um, if you need a kind of scalable streaming service or stream management service, um, Kafka helps for that. Uh, the, the creators of Kafka call it a distributed commit log. 
um, but it can be used for so many different things. Pub sub, um, messaging, like message queue management, job management, lots of different things. Data analytics pipelines, things like that. Um, and then there's Heroku Connect. So this might be, might be really the most interesting to all of you if you um, are existing Salesforce developers or doing integrations with Salesforce CRM data. Um, Heroku Connect is really, really integrates uh, or synchronizes your Salesforce CRM data with a po Heroku Postgres database. So you now have SQL access to all of that data in the objects and fields within Salesforce. And you don't have to make API requests out to Salesforce to pull that data in, the Salesforce APIs. Um, so you can create things like, uh, on the left here, like a customer-facing app that is personalized because it's using your, your customer's CRM data. Um, we use this internally at Salesforce for a lot of things. Um, and then lots of other companies use this internally or externally for, for, for many, many different uses. Uh, some other use cases there, multi-org, like if you have multi-org set up with Salesforce, um, synchronizing between them, um, and analytics and insight. All right, team workflow and collaboration. So you know, we've talked about a lot of the technical, the, the products, the, the kind of hard things that you get. But generally, software is not developed by yourself. It's generally as part of a team. Um, even if you are one man or one person development team, you're going to have a manager. You're going to have someone that you're going to have to show your work to. Um, and so uh, Heroku has created lots of uh, permissions, um, kind of nice, easy ways to manage a group of developers. One of our biggest customers has um, 4,447 apps running on Heroku. It's a lot of apps to, to, to manage. And as you can imagine, it's a lot of people that have, that have written or created those applications. And they then have to manage all those people. So we have all sorts of different permissions um, that, are, that are very easy to, to manage. And two-factor authentic authentication. And then there's continuous delivery. So this is uh, called Heroku Pipelines. Um, and this is, this is a pipeline with three different stages in it, review apps, staging, and production. Um, a nice way to see your code kind of move through its maturity from I've just created it or I've just started fixing a bug or adding a new feature to, to a staging environment where I'm showing it off internally. Maybe I'm integrating it with other changes that other developers are making to actually being in, in production. Um, and you can even see here we have like one production app. Uh, that one on the top is in the US. And the one uh, in the second place on the right side there is in Germany. Then there's continuous integration. So this is uh, tests, um, automated test running. So it's, it's uh, kind of nicely integrated with um, Heroku pipelines. You can gate your apps moving between those stages on a successful passing of all of your tests. Um, one thing I will mention is that like, to use Heroku, you do not have to use these CD and CI tools, Heroku pipelines, Heroku CI. Um, if you uh, have a kind of a, a Jenkins setup with your, own, with your own company, you can continue using that. We try to make it easy to, to integrate with lots of other tools. We just saw an opportunity to improve the way software is developed by um, providing some, some CD and CI tools. OK, so that was the, all the three, kind of the three pillars of, of what Heroku tries to provide. Um, those things kind of all stitched together is really like the overall developer experience we're trying to, to provide, provide for developers. Um, and these are, you know, you can use all sorts of different open source languages on, on Heroku and technologies and very easy integration with your Salesforce CRM data. <coughs> but there's even more. Um, I have one minute and 19 seconds left, uh, so not enough time to go into all of these. But you can get a private space, which is effectively a managed, um, uh, managed subnet, managed private network that we take care of for you. We set up load balancing and take care of all that for you. Um, you can set up VPN or VPC peering between maybe an AWS VPC or um, your on-prem data center. You could set up a VPN peering connection there. Um, you can build and deploy Docker images. So if you don't want to use Heroku's um, kind of curated language deployment and, and build experience, you can just give us a Docker image, and we'll run that for you and handle load balancing and all the other stuff. And then there's Heroku Shield, which is um, for companies that have um, high compliance needs. Um, HIPAA, PCI, all sorts of stuff. If you go to heroku.com slash compliance, you can see all the different um, uh, levels of compliance that, that Heroku has and provides. Um, then learn more. So there's more Heroku talks. Um, if you come to the Heroku booth, uh, that's just behind you. Uh, it says engagement on it. 
We'll have a handout with all the other Heroku talks on there. You can also see a demo or talk to those folks up there. Um, there are several Heroku Trailhead um, badges you can earn. And then there is now a uh, newly released Heroku Technical Architect certification. Uh, so if you want to get, get more uh, cert certifications on your, um, on your title, you can do that. And with that, and five seconds left on my timer, oh, it's never, sorry, negative five seconds left. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I'm Chris Castle. Happy to answer questions afterwards. <laughs>